This is the discourse with Dr. Ken. Today we have a very very interesting topic. Even though I suppose it's is going to be very heavy because um, we're talking about grief today and then the management of loss. Well, we'll go through it. We'll have. <laughs> I suppose it's very interesting because we promote it all through the week. Last week we talked about big populations and how big can a population be and how productive can a population be. But that's time. Sometimes population equally depletes through loss, isn't it? But so today we are going to talk about grief and then the management of loss. And my guest today is a very important guest. Talking about guests, today I have somebody who is evidence not witness you know like i always tell my lawyers <laughs> my lawyer friends you know what's the difference between evidence and witness you know so um, uh, technically evidence is somebody who had gone through it but uh, witness may be just somebody who was around there when matter or call this is the discourse with dr ken topic for today is grief and the management of loss. And my guest is Uyeme IV King. Uyeme, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you, Dr. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure. Yeah, same uh, here. Yes, we, I, I promote this um, topic all through the week, and people were, I can see messages already on, on our screen, <laughs> yeah, and I'm very sure that it will be very engaging a topic because it's a topic that affects us all, isn't it? Um, yeah. Once you are living at some point, you, there will be some loss, and then some point there will be some need to grieve. So today we are going to talk about what does this thing mean, grief, and how do we manage it? <laughs> That's very interesting. How uh, IV King, you know, how do, you know it's, it's a double barrel yeah, name. Yeah, it is, know? because <laughs> my dad gave all of us a native name and an English name. Okay. Yeah, so that's how my siblings and I have the name. Okay. Yeah. So what 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 does Uyime mean? You know, just okay, just for Uyime the Uyime means by God's agreement. By God's agreement. Yeah. Okay. Is it written or verbal? The agreement. Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. You know, so let me take uh, your profile. You know, Uyime uh, Ivy King is co-founder and builder of Protection Plus Services Limited. Uyime um, is an author and publisher and also a conference speaker, certified marriage mentor and relationship coach. She's certified. She's a certified grief and loss counselor and a mental health addiction uh, addictions counselor. Uyeme Ivy King also holds a certification in women leadership from PLANUSA, and um, she is an executive director of Save Our Women, which is S O W N G Foundation. Uyeme Ivy King spearheads the flagship program Women Empowerment Skills Training which is um, abbreviated as WEST, which aims to equip young girls and women with entrepreneurial skills. She is a great mobilizer. And Uyeme, you are welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Sir. Are you ready? Did you warm up to the, the Yes, I'm warming today? up. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Normally, at the end of the program, I normally ask our guests to give me a quote for the week. But because of the peculiar peculiarity of today's uh, topic, I will give... Um, a quote for the week, and I'll get Ivy King to email to give us at the end, tail end of the program, her own quote. So my quote for the week would be, the mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clearer. Mm. I take it again, the mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. What a way to start the topic, yeah. isn't it? Because uh, talking about grief, you cannot but think about turbulence, isn't yeah. it? So what it's is this thing we call grief? And and please um, explain to me. Take your time. Yeah. Um, you know, just talk to me like I was a nine-year-old, you know, that, <laughs> that kind of thing. What, 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 how do we understand grief? What Grief involves coping with loss. Yes, mm -hmm. I know. But is that all it's about? Okay, Um. first of all, the grief is there in the first place because somebody you loved died. Okay. So that's what brings on the grief. Mm. Though it's not only always about loss of a human being. Okay. It could be loss of a relationship, mm -hmm. loss of a job, or of a career. So many things trigger it. Mm. But grief is that deep sadness, that emotional pain mm. that you feel as a result of something 
that you really held dear, whether it's a human being, whether mm. it's a job, whether it's a career, mm. it, it slipped out of your hands mm. through an event that you you were not able to control. Mm. And not planned so, for. And yes, an mm. unplanned and unforeseen mm. circumstance. Mm. So it triggers the grief. Mm. And grief is deep. It's mm. personal. Yes. It's internal mm. most times. Mm. It's the mourning that we see when you mm. cry. Mm -hmm. Is That's the reaction to the grief. Mm. But grief in itself is mm. something it could be really complicated. Mm. You know? so talking yeah. about complications, because we are going to go through the, the various stages of grief and the types of grief, you mm. know, because we'll have 55 minutes. So I'm happy you've mentioned that um, because it must be something that is very complicated. Mm. In fact, uh, uh, reading through grief, um, the more I read, the more I realized that, like you just said, it's, mm -hmm. it's not just about loss of uh, family member or yeah. death. You know, in fact, reading deeper and deeper, I found out how even the loss of job or even divorce can impact yeah. uh, big time on, on people. So from what you said, so people grieve over loss of marriage, for example, job mm -hmm. or career, financial stability, good health, and even fertility, yeah. you yeah. know, from, from what I read. So mm. this is a different kind of grief. How is that different from the grief when it has to do with say loss of family member death i mean yeah. you, you know these mm. types you know how how is it different the feeling that, that it triggers and what comes with it is it a bit different you know in terms of the feeling mm -hmm. can you just take me through that uh, i think for for the kind of grief that you have described mm. that comes from divorce it's just like a woman who goes into the labor ward really? you're going to have a baby and then that baby ends up dying and you come out empty. Wow. So it could trigger a lot of grief. But in that case, I think, um, yeah, you can't really um, replace a baby, for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. But the woman always has that opportunity to have another baby. Okay. If there's divorce that mm -hmm. triggers that. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been cases of people who divorced and through intervention of therapists mm -hmm. and counselors, mm -hmm. they came back together. Mm -hmm. So that possibility is always there. Okay. But when it comes to death, death mm -hmm. is so final. It comes with finality. Yes, it? because yeah. you're not going to see the person anymore mm. yeah wow that, that, that that's the scary part you know um that <laughs> yeah. the, the ones that comes with finality so there's a, uh, a question here i said today's show is quite ironic uh, my youngest brother passed a while back at mm. age four wow and his name uyime mm. <laughs> sorry and for your loss <laughs> talking about grief you see what i mean Mm. Um, you know, you you had gone through it. You can see another you may hear is saying yeah. uh, just past uh, younger brother passing. It's it's quite a difficult topic, but it's something we have to discuss yeah. anyway. Even if that itself provides therapy, mm. uh, both for the people who are discussing and those who are listening. Mm. Now, I read a, a a book. You know, coming. You know, when I knew I was going to host you, and the conversation was going to be around grief. So I read a, a read, I read a book by Elizabeth Cobbler Ross. Okay. Um, and that book tried to describe the five stages of grief. And uh, that book, you know, is, is uh, on death and dying. And it mm. was written as far back as 1969. Mm. So Elizabeth said that there are five stages of grief, denial, anger, mm. bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Mm. So I, I take it again, first stage, denial, then anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Mm. Just take your time, um, Uyeme. Can, can we, can, how, in your own understanding, an estimation mm. how what are these you know can you describe these stages anger mm. no denial okay. anger bargaining depression and okay things. in the first place i would love to say this mm. in as much as so much has been written about the whole grief mm. griefing experience and all mm -hmm. grief is so personal in that there's no textbook pattern okay. to it mm -hmm. so uh, because for me i lost my husband 2020 mm. and um i've read all those um grief and mm. the stages yeah. mm. denial and all of mm. that it's not something but you can it, capture it, in a book yes, it, it, you know it's individual yes, you can't it's so personal I, mm. I didn't go through those stages like that because sometimes it doesn't follow that pattern mm -hmm. you know for each person mm. it's different mm. it's dependent on the relationship i can remember mm. something somebody said to me one of my close people mm -hmm. the person said wow if your husband had been a bad man for mm. instance mm -hmm. you pretend go through the emotions and then you say good riddance to bad rubbish mm. and but for in this situation we had a very close-knitted relationship mm. and the extent of the love that you had for the person mm. who also determined the depth of the grief mm. that you experience mm. so it's not the same for everybody mm. yes some people mm. hear the news and they start out in denial mm -hmm. for me the kind of denial that i i experienced was the fact that i had 
children in the picture and mm -hmm. I didn't want to think about myself first okay. of all okay. I knew the kind of relationship they shared with their father mm. so I had to push my own grief I had to push my own feelings and emotions mm. to the background so that I could be able to help them because it's different when you're facing grief and children are involved in that picture mm. so you, you tough as it is painful as it is mm. you can't be um selfish because you still need to be a parent in that situation mm. so i needed to push my own feelings aside to focus on the children mm -hmm. first of all to break the news to them mm -hmm. and then to help them process what had happened to them because mm. it was <laughs> a tragedy of untold proportions because mm. of the kind of father yeah, and husband yeah. he was mm. and i knew it was going to be a difficult one mm. is a night that I don't ever want to, I try to push it to the mm. re inner recesses of my mm. mind mm. because it was horrible. I didn't have an adult with me mm. and then social media had gone haywire. Wow. You know, in Nigeria, we have professional grief um, announcers. Yes. When it so happens, they, they just go on their it. social media mm -hmm. and they go haywire. They don't care how it affects the family. Mm. So I had been trying to delay breaking the news to my uh, my children until I could have my mom come in from Akwaibom. Mm. So she could help me with that process. Mm -hmm. But a friend of mine said to me, look, Uyime, the way this news is spreading online, mm -hmm. it was as bad as some <laughs> some international media carried it. I was shocked. Wow. We've done events that that coverage would have given us a lot of leverage. Mm. And we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. It had to take the death of my husband to have that kind of exposure that we did. Mm. And she said, please just tell the children. Mm. You have teenagers. Mm. My first two were teenagers as at that, at that time. time yeah. And she said, somebody might call them and tell them, break the news to them. Mm. So I found myself confronted with a nightmare. Mm. So I had to call my my mates mm. and i said okay let me call them first because they are like older siblings of my children and break mm. the news to them mm -hmm. so they could help me i also had my siblings in the house mm. and that was even a mistake i should have told the children at once because the rockers that happened after that mm. they rolled on the floor they went outside they screamed as if something was off mm. and my children heard and they came downstairs and it was Looking back, it's, it's now funny. You know, they pushed the door to open and my sister was on this other side pushing mm. the door so they couldn't come out. Eventually, they came outside and we broke the news. They rolled on the floor for the people that rolled on the floor and all of that. So um, I had to push it to the back of my mind to deal with the children. Mm. So that was the kind of denial. I'm trying to describe the kind of denial that I went through. Mm. There are some people who, when they hear the news that a loved one is gone, mm. they first of all, they don't even want to believe that it's true. Yeah. In their inner subconscious, they know that something terrible has happened. Mm -hmm. But they are clinging on to one little vestige of hope mm. that, okay, maybe there's a mistake so somewhere. maybe that's the beginning we're talking yes. about. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this person could be revived. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's... <laughs> and I'm going to be saying this on for the first time openly. Mm. We went to the mosque, some some of our close friends, my husband's mentors, mm. I mean mentees, sorry, mm -hmm. went to the mortuary with a pastor and we kept praying, we kept hoping mm. that somehow he will open his eyes mm -hmm. until the final day of the burial. There are people that kept praying mm. that we've heard those stories that when the burial is about to happen, the person suddenly wakes up. So mm. we had that hope. Mm. So there's that, there's that. And then when you realize that truly this person is not coming back, he's mm. final, mm. then anger sets in. Mm -hmm. You become upset mm -hmm. that why, why did this person die? You even become upset with a dead person. Mm. I've had um, conversations, mm -hmm. you know, with myself mm -hmm. and I I, I I, I talked to my husband and I said, why didn't you fight? Mm. Why didn't you fight? for me and the children you know mm. anger mm -hmm. so that stage is there mm -hmm. and then after that stage if, if it is not well managed it could mm -hmm. slide into depression depression mm -hmm. and um, where of course we all know what depression is mm. you, it becomes really complicated you feel as if life is not worth living mm -hmm. you even feel at some point like okay i think i need to go mm. what's the essence of life why am i living mm. there's no point living you get know? to that yeah it gets yeah. to that. Wow. And for some people, some people don't even come out of that stage. Mm -hmm. It becomes even more complicated that they need mm -hmm. somebody, they need to some seek therapy. professional mm -hmm. help, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then after that, after a while, if you get the right support that mm -hmm. you need at that stage, mm -hmm. then you come into a point of acceptance. 
yeah. where you realize that okay, truly this person is not going to come back anymore. Yeah. Life has to go has on. Has to go on. Yeah. You know, it's quite a, a, a very touchy. Yeah. Like one of our message here is saying, is a, sincerity is a very uh, good topic, but I must say very touchy. Um, yes, I agree with you completely because this, this is better imagined than described, isn't yeah. it? And another one complained that I didn't pronounce your name well. So can you pronounce it the first time? <laughs> Uyeme. 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 <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. So I hope you are happy now. <laughs> um, another message is saying here that I lost my father four years ago, mm. though he was 82 years old, mm. but I have not recovered from my loss. Some mm. images still reenact in my head. People say time heals wound, but this is still a shock to me. Can mm. you imagine? Four yeah. years after, mm -hmm. the man 82, which we, some people relatively yeah. would say had lived a long yeah, life. Because the grief, grief is it. not a destination you get to. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. And this journey of grief continues all through life. Mm. You know, sometimes you feel as if you're okay. Yeah. There's, uh, you feel as if you can take on the whole world. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you break down. You break down, okay. You know, yeah. like this whole period, the loss that we've experienced in Nigeria, mm. where a whole family, three people from yeah, one it's, family. It's incredible. It triggered me a lot. In fact, yeah. at some point, I was crying as if somebody beat me. Mm. So I just said, okay, what I'll do to help myself mm -hmm. right now. I'm not going to watch any of those videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once I see it pop up on my timeline, mm -hmm. I just push it away. Mm -hmm. You know, so those things happen. Yeah. It's a, a process. But if it, for four years, if it is so still so intense mm -hmm. after four years, then that's complicated grief. Mm -hmm. And the person needs to get help. Okay. Yeah. So need, you need help when it becomes complicated and, yeah. and protracted. Isn't yeah. It? This is The Discourse with Dr. Ken. You know, we have an, a proverb in my place. It says that when, when they are carrying the dead body of somebody else, mm. it looks like firewood <laughs> until, <laughs> until, it, until it comes out of your Absolutely. own house. Yeah. You hinted, uh, you know, quite all right, but I've read about different types of grief. Different types of grief describe how varied and complex grief can be. Mm. In fact, um, I, I can see from what I read, there's delayed grief, mm. uh, there's inhibited grief, there's cumulative grief, then there's collective grief. You know, um, maybe you talk me through delayed grief and what does it say? Is this, this is the kind of shock, uh, you know, of the loss that pauses the body, body's ability to walk the emotions, but feel the grief days, weeks even longer and longer after, which is like that one, they, yeah. they, they, you know, so of the 82 years old, you know. Mm. So did I, did I describe no, it properly? Even, there's, there's a friend who lost her mom okay. and she told me that all through that process, she was numb. Mm. She didn't cry from when they broke the news to her okay. to when they started preparing for the funeral and all. Mm. But she said by the time she got to church mm. for the funeral service, it was in church that she broke down finally. Mm. And when she broke down, there was no consoling her. Yeah. So in her own case, she had delayed it, mm. you know. Mm. And sometimes that one is not so good. There are people that when you break the news to them, they are numb, they are not saying anything. Yeah. And then when it finally opens up like the floodgates, mm -hmm. you know, it becomes really, really tough. Mm. It could even lead to illness. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, so Ezra is writing here. Mm. In fact, this is a very terrible situation. Mm. He's saying, good day, doctor. Um, a very deep topic, especially considering how to handle grief and loss. I'm mm. still nursing the loss of my dearest younger sister mm. in 2004. Can mm. you imagine way back? Mm. After I had already secured admission to study French in OAU, I hope I lost hope in life and mm. gave up my ambition over 10 years. Mm. Can you imagine? Mm. You know, over 10 years. So that's the delayed one. Yeah. Can you take me through inhibited? And inhibited grief, they say, this involves the repression of emotions. People don't even realize here yeah, that they are doing so and the symptoms that come from these things like uh, stomach upset insomnia panic anxiety mm. yeah you know because when when you talk grief is also something that has to do with the mind as mm. well okay and um it could produce physical symptoms of illness mm. if it is not rightly managed mm. so there are people who just lock up their emotions mm -hmm. like i i said something mm -hmm. when i got the news that my husband had passed yeah I had to freeze my emotions mm. to be able to deal with my children. Mm. You can do that um, for a certain period, period so that time. you can handle, like my mm. case, the example I gave, mm. you can handle something else. Mm -hmm. But after a while, just let it go because mm. you need to grieve. You yeah. need to grieve mm -hmm. for you to be okay. Mm. If you inhibit it, if you lock it all you, you in, heal, you... one day you will implode. Okay. And when you implode, it becomes really bad. Mm. Yeah. 
Oh, you know. So yeah. then the, 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 there's a talk about collective grief, and this is major events like war, mm. natural disasters, pandemic, mm. um, hardship. The, yes, hardship, you know, reaching losses, the rise and, of the dollar, you know, uh. <laughs> change <laughs> that comes with uh, changes in normal life. Yeah. So you just mentioned rise of the dollar. Mm. The, the impact can you cause grief? Yes. You know, impact of hardship there are, there are, and economic There are wars, parents yeah. that are paying school fees in dollars. Okay. So, <laughs> the more it rises, the mm. more the BP rises along mm. <laughs> with the dollar. It's, it's, it's so incredible. It's, yeah. yeah. So, uh, let, let's talk about the symptoms of grief, you know. And, you know, I know that it impacts on mind, body, and soul. Mm. And some of the symptoms can be emotional symptoms. Emotions yeah. coming in waves without warning. In one minute, life feels back to normal. Mm. Next minute, it tears Yo. and it goes from it's sadness even, to anger yes, and joy. You yes. know, can you explain this situation? Mm. For there, there are people that when they are grieving, it kind of slows you down. Okay. People lose interest in their normal activities that they're used to. Mm. There are some people that even stop going. I have a, a friend, mm. an older friend who mm. lost her second son. Mm. The second son was a mentee of my husband's. Okay. And he passed on, I think, some months after my husband passed. Mm. And um, it's been, it's over two years now. Mm. And she's still grieving diff- seriously. Mm. The husband has not even, because he was running his own business, mm. he handed over to his son mm. and he doesn't even go anywhere. He just sits in the house. It's as if life has lost meaning mm. for them. Mm. So those are some of the things that um, people deal with. And then some people are not able to eat. Mm. They lose interest. You have to force them. It's as if the food is like charcoal in their mm. mouth. Mm. They are unable to eat. Mm. They lose interest in maybe even improving themselves. Mm. They just put their lives on hold. Mm. Yes. Ah, so it, it happens. Yeah. Just listen to this. Yeah. This one is a very peculiar case. Mm. This guy is saying, in my own case, I didn't flinch because I know for certain it was going to show up at some point. Mm. My old man, on the other hand, went ballistic, accusing me of killing my brother because he went out with me when it happened. Mm. So the old man mm. is still holding him You know, when, when somebody dies, we always mm. look for somebody to blame. To blame yeah. For instance, in Nigeria, there's nobody that dies in natural, natural death. death. There are always yeah. these conspiracy theories <laughs> yes. that maybe somebody kills the person. Or, mm. So I think really for a lot of people, that reaction is just mm. like some sort of coping mechanism okay. for people mm. you looking for somebody to blame mm. you know it kind of um, suits your emotions mm-hmm. somehow mm. and I think that's what has happened to his father okay. he can't grapple with the mm. fact that this his son went mm. out with the brother costed, yes yeah. mm. and didn't come back home again mm. so of course the culprit will be mm-hmm. the brother who the brother. went out with him mm. yeah. so I think please just cut your father some slack <laughs> <laughs> yes so okay let's go to physical symptoms you know and here is described as major physical toll on the body this type of a works the nervous system can mm. affect even the immune system yeah is it, is it, it could know? break down your immunity it could even lead to bp issues really i remember that early time that my husband passed mm. i was constantly checking mm. my bp constantly mm. every day my younger sister will come will check my bp check my vitals and mm. all of that mm. yes Okay, so the, then there are there, there is uh, behavioral changes too that mm. comes with grief, and mm. in this case, you know, it affects concentration, confusion, mm. even focus and mm. difficulty. You know, uh, keeping track of one's responsibilities. Yes, you see this in workplace a lot. You know, yeah. people who have passed, but you mm. know, their supervisors they are just going through the motions. Yeah, but supervisors yeah. don't actually take this or their mm. bosses. You know, they just think it's business as usual. Why yeah. can't you get over it? Mm. So it affects their focus. Sometimes they, they come across as confused. Mm. You know, difficult in focusing on the task at yeah. hand. Um, what, what do you say to that kind of situation? What, what kind of advice? Do I you think have? those kind of people should, they should get help okay. because that's really um, getting complica- complicated. It's okay mm. if you're experiencing that for a while, but when it's pro- protracted, then you need to get help. Mm. See a, a grief counselor mm. or something. At some stage, my children and I got grief counseling okay. from some professionals and mm. it's interesting because somebody reached out to me from mm. the UK okay. and said I've been following your husband's videos I've never met him but his videos have really helped me in my career track and all of that mm. and the outcome of that conversation was that she got us to have grief counseling with some professionals from the UK mm. at her own cost at her own cost at her own cost oh, okay. so my children and I had that Mm. And it really helped a lot. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. And, uh, another another uh, scenario that is quite um, dangerous. Maybe all of them are dangerous, quite a lot, mm. but this one is quite complicated. Is it is the ambiguous loss? You know, the type of grief. You know, this is a lack of closure situation mm. around the loss. You know, imagine a situation where a loved one is dead, but body can't be found. Mm. You know, wow. that, that, just, that, that, that is. I just that had somebody talk to me about that. The mm. husband was picked up by some people. It was a kidnap situation okay. two years ago. Mm. So she came to me and she said, I don't really, I don't know what am I. Am mm. I a widow mm. or a single woman? I don't even know what it is. Mm. Because we've not heard anything from the people who picked him up. Mm. They were collecting money for ransom. Mm. And I asked her, did you people ask for proof of life? She said the family did not ask, they were just paying money. Mm. So she doesn't know if the husband has died. Mm. And she said people are asking her to move on. She doesn't know how to move on mm. because she doesn't know what happened to the man. Mm. So there's people like that. Mm. There's somebody who told me how mm. her father left the house mm. and that was it. They never, never heard from him. Yeah. An older man. So he falls yes. into this ambiguous law. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're not sure. You're neither here nor there. It's mm. quite difficult. Yeah. Ah, it's, 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 it's quite difficult. So yeah. there's different dif- disenfranchised grief, and this one is very, very interesting. You know, mm. what does it mean? You know, when society doesn't consider a loss worthy of grief, I give you an example mm. loss of a pet or the loss of same sex partner, for example. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know because it, our society culturally does not yeah. accept it. Mm. And when you lose such partner, mm. our society begins to think, listen, move on, move mm. on. nothing happened. Yeah. Anyway. Um, maybe good readers, you know. So, mm-hmm. is it, it, it th- those kind of situations can um, yeah, come it, up? You can it imagine, can, it, isn't it? Yes, they happen. It, even know, even pet, you know, dog. You know, somebody's mm-hmm. grieving and you're saying, "Get on with it." Yeah. You know, it's just like what? my yes. my daughter called me two yeah. days ago. She said yeah. her lecturer didn't come to class. Okay, said the dog is sick. Yes. I couldn't hide it because I don't like dogs. Yes. Sorry to say it on air. Yes. <laughs> so I couldn't understand why somebody's life had to be put on hold because of mm. a dog. But mm. of course, I'm sure yes. the dog was very important to the owner. Yes. So those kind of things where people don't really identify with your kind of loss. Yes. 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 It is called the disenfranchised yeah. uh, grief. Yes. It? And then yeah. every day we are hearing stories of people that have been kidnapped, mm. you know, like the Chibok girls mm-hmm. and things like that. People mm-hmm. are dying in the society mm-hmm. and sometimes if it doesn't really it feels far get away. close yes, home, yeah, mm. you, it doesn't really touch you that much mm. until it gets closer home. Mm. Yeah. Oh, So, you know, let's let's talk a bit about uh, post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. People call it PTSD. Mm. So how do we manage this? First and foremost, in your own words and in your own understanding, just explain to me how you understand PTSD SD. And then after that, you know, how can it be managed? Okay. Um, um, post-traumatic stress disorder is, mm. um, is a very, is something that is occasioned by a very terrifying event okay. that has happened mm. and it could manifest in several ways. Okay. You know, some people have, um, flashbacks mm. of the incident. Mm. Some people have panic attacks, mm. you know, and things like that. It's a mental disorder. And I think that one, a psychologist mm. needs to handle it, okay. needs to be involved in the process of healing and mm. managing that condition. Mm. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's more of that one is more of a psychologist. Mm. Yes. You know, that, that, yes. That should deal with that. This is The Discourse with Dr. Ken. Can people prepare for grief? <sighs> You know, I, I thought I should ask that Anticipate question. You know, because it's, <laughs> yes, because yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, if we, if we must be realistic, mm. at some point, you know, somebody you can anticipate, but you just mm. push it aside. You know, but can people prepare or you know to cope? I think grief? Um, in How a situation where somebody has been diagnosed with a fatal um illness mm. or something I, I, I like that angle you made. okay i was saying that um in a situation where you've gotten a diagnose okay you know you, there's some people that are terminal mm. and maybe the doctors say oh this person has mm. one week mm. or one month mm-hmm. you, it could so, even be two years you know or even two years mm. and you know the person this person is winding up mm-hmm. and um i think in that case the person is already griefing in some way mm. before it even happens mm. You know, but if I'm to be very frank, mm. no matter how much you anticipate loss, mm. when it happens, it's still a shock. 
no matter how much you know that this person that I'm nursing this um job I'm about to lose it and nothing is going to stop it from happening mm. It's still a shock when it happens. Mm. You know, it's like a footballer who has anticipated that I'm going to play in the big league mm. and you've been preparing and everything. And then all of a sudden, you have an injury mm. that is very, it's so bad that... Yeah, career threatening. Yes, yeah. it mm. threatens, it's, in fact, it stops the career yes. because at the end of it, you can't even play at that level anymore. Mm. So you can imagine the kind of grief mm. that it will give to that person. Yeah. So, um, yes, you can anticipate that this thing is going to happen and I will grieve. But when it still happens, it's a shock. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but it, I think mm. one can just make their peace mm. with the situation because one of the things that I've, is like my mantra for life is that the things that I do not understand mm. because I have a relationship with God, I hand it over to the one who knows it all. Mm. Yes, and then I have my peace. So that helped, isn't it, that in this circumstance? Uh, my cat passed a couple of weeks back. I couldn't touch it. I instructed someone to handle it. Oftentimes, I kind of elude myself locking in as if the cat is still locking in the corners. Mm. I've had him for eight years. Uh, eight year, eight mm. cool years, a cat, and he can't uh, mm. deal with that. Is, 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 yeah, is that, or, that are very is that usual or unusual with our situation? I mean, Nigeria or Africa, cat, relationship with cat. Well, cat. I thought it was dog. an you bought in kind of. No, I don't think so because I remember an incident that happened with a dog that mm. was killed. It caused a lot of outrage. Mm. And then dog lovers came out and they, there was a lot of rookers online. Yeah. You know, so maybe there are people that have those kind of relationships with mm. their pets. Pets, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it, it grief is grief, isn't mm. it? Um, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how how uh, how can people cope with grief? Uh, and why do I ask this question? Is mm. you know there are some uh, insights here, uh, like taking care of yourself, mm. uh, e.g., exercise or eat regular nutrition and nutritious meals. But nutritious meals in our economic circumstances, how do you how do you <laughs> get, get and guarantee that on a continuous basis? Mm. But but speak to that. You know, is how do you take care of oneself? What do you suggest in the area okay. of nutrition and exercise? Okay, um, for nutrition, I, I think that we have some of our native food that may not necessarily cause an arm and a leg. There are people that are into farming. Okay. There are people that, that have like maybe small gardens behind their mm. homes and you can just throw in something into the meal to mm. make it nutritious. But mm. when you're griefing, you're, some people do not really can't eat. Okay. Can't eat. So, so loss of appetite can yes, come with it. Yes, loss of appetite. Mm. So, so you may not be able to eat that much, mm. but you owe it to yourself okay. and to other people that you're responsible for. Okay. Like in my own situation, I had to make the effort because I, I had four younger ch children to take mm. care of. Mm. So I had to make that effort to take care of myself mm. so that I would be okay for them because mm. the thought of them losing me as well mm. <laughs> is something that I didn't even want to anticipate. So there are so many coping strategies. Okay. You have family, if you have good family, mm. you know, that's a support system. Mm. Because if you're going through grief and you have that support, mm. it will help you a great deal. Mm. And that's one of the things that really helped me. My family mm. was there, very supportive. My mom mm -hmm. was there with me. Mm. I had a few good friends sitting on the floor with me. My mm. siblings, mm. you know, I had some people that, um, all of these people that I've mentioned, mm -hmm. a few people from my church, mm -hmm. you know, praying with me. Mm -hmm. So that also really helped a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that, okay, we may not really, yes, we can imagine what you're going through, but mm -hmm. we are not exactly in your shoes, but mm -hmm. we empathize with what is going on mm -hmm. and we'll sit down on the floor literally with you mm -hmm. uh, in solidarity to show that we feel we feel what is going on with you. Mm. So that goes a great way okay. to helping one mm. with coping mm. when a loss has happened. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, there are so many support systems. Um, family is a support system. Mm -hmm. Good friends is a support system. Mm -hmm. A good church or place of worship Mm. Maybe if the person is, if you're a Christian mm. or you belong to some other faith, maybe you're a Muslim, you have people from that faith mm. environment who are there to support you. It also helps a great deal. Mm. For me, apart from all these things that I've mentioned, 
one of the things that provided a very good source of support and comfort mm. for me was reading the word of God. Okay. I felt drawn to the word of God in a way that, yes, every year I take a whole year reading the Bible in mm. a year. Mm. But when I lost my husband, I felt drawn to the word of God in in a different way. Mm. So that was the only thing that made sense to me the first few weeks of loss. Mm. So I was just, I kept listening to the Bible. I put it on audio. Even when I'm sleeping, my body is asleep. My subconscious mind was absorbing the word. Mm. And I discovered that it was building something on the inside, okay. building some sort of resilience because mm. after the loss, I also had to grapple with a lot of other things, mm. business challenges, mm -hmm. um, in-law challenges mm. and all of that. So mm. it really helped me mm. to be able to face that. Mm. So if somebody has that kind of relationship, it also helps. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So talking about relationship and support structure, because mm. I'm happy you picked that up. Yeah. You know, grief would definitely come at some point in our lives is inevitable. Mm. How important is it that people build good families and build good support system, like good friends and connections? Yes, it's because very, eventually you are going to need it down. Yes, there. so how important we are is not that? meant to do life in silos. Okay, you know I've heard people say, "Oh, don't trust anybody," mm. and all of that. For me, that's a recipe for paranoia. Okay, because you need people. Mm. We we were made to be interdependent on each other. Mm. So it's very important to build and create the relationships, and you don't just do it because the trouble has come. Mm -hmm. Even before trouble comes, yeah. you know you have these resources that you can reach out to mm. and get the help that you need. Mm. And if you want people to be there for you in your mm. hour of need, mm. you must also live a life of being there for mm. other people as well mm. so that you're able to draw on that um, community mm. when you're facing loss or facing challenges of any kind. So it's very important to build the right relationships and also be the right person as well. Mm. Because sometimes we expect so much from other people mm. that we are not willing to give ourselves. Mm. Yes. Okay, so uh, l let's talk about, um, uh, you know, um, attending to your emotions in, in times of grief. You mm. know, uh, it's important, especially for the, the men folk, you know, because mm. here, uh, you know, from what I read, you know, you, you for example, you don't be ashamed to cry. Yeah. You know? um, but a lot and of you men, know, in this society, yes. they say men yes. don't so cry. How, real how men do you, don't yes. cry. I, I totally disagree with that saying that mm -hmm. real men don't cry. Okay. Because like I said at some point that if you keep bottling up, mm. you will implode. It will come out in a lot of unhealthy ways. Mm. Maybe you're going to be nasty to the people around you mm. or you're going to do something really terrible mm. or because you're dealing with something on the inside that you're afraid to mm. express to somebody. Mm. So there's no no, there should be no shame at all yeah. in crying, in mm. letting people see your humanity. Mm. Because at the end of the day, whether you're a man or a woman, we're all human beings mm -hmm. and we experience emotions. Mm. So it is very important to cry it out. Mm. Let yourself go. There's no shame to it. Mm -hmm. And if it is that bad that, okay, you don't want the multitude to yeah. see, okay, I'm a man mm. and I need to cry, then shut the at door. Least maybe, yeah, shut the door. Mm. Maybe you have a wife, a mm. sibling or something and cry your eyes out yeah. i was some of the funeral um videos for the late dr herbert mm -hmm. i saw yeah. some very top, big top men personalities yeah. breaking down yeah it doesn't detract from who yeah. they are it doesn't take anything it doesn't take anything. If anything reinforces who yeah they are. yeah Fantastic. There's a message here, Oyeme, and he's saying that before the death of my sister, I used to shed tears over people's loss. But after she died, I don't anymore. As if my heart has now turned into stone. Am I still okay? I think he's um, he's part of the whole process hmm. of mourning. And that's from and Eze, by the way, okay. from mainland. Okay. It's a whole process hmm. of mourning. I think the person is still in some sort of shock. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this. But yeah, but mm. so can you be in shock for many years? Because it looks like a long time, you know, Eze is going through this. Yes. You can be in the shock for that number yes. of years. Yeah? Yes. Oh, it's, it's incredible. So, um, you know, there are, I have to ask this now as we are going into the okay. last uh, chapter of the hour for our program uh, for today. Are there cultural or religious practices related to grief that you find particularly meaningful or helpful? Okay, now first we're of bringing all, religion and yeah, culture. How does it affect? Grief I think. And I think first of all, and, one of the things, if you're in a good um, faith system, faith community, for mm. instance, mm. that community 
um, like I know some churches that they will send people to come to the house mm. to be with you through that process and all of that. I think that is positive mm. for the people that do it, mm. even though sometimes when loss happens. Yeah. A lot of interesting things also come along. People that you would have thought would have provided an anchor mm. for you become the antagonist. Okay, so and you have to deal with that. Yes, yeah, so and, and, and <laughs> so that brings the plank we call yeah. disappointment. Yes, isn't it? can yes. you speak to that? Did you experience that? Where, did you were there a swatch of time that you felt really disappointed by some yeah. group or sections of yes. your family or friends? Yes, I mm. did. Yeah, well, well, yes, but where were you disappointed? For... Is it that you you anticipated? Or you you expected you know, a I lot, think, I and think, what has what what mm. has that? Sorry, I'm cutting you. <laughs> what has that done to you after uh, yeah. you know knowing going through the process? Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, it's because of the kind of life my husband and I lived. Okay, we we've lived for other people. Okay, you know, in terms of the kind of support system that we provided for others, in terms of the the number of people that God has used us to raise, mm. and of course, I I expected to a large extent that these people will be there for me. I think that's mm. one of the things that first hits you when a loss has happened. Mm. You discover that a lot of the people that have been milling around, mm. um, professing love mm -hmm. and um, undying loyalty and everything, when the person is no more, mm. you see the reality of it. Yeah. Once the funeral has happened, mm. a lot of them no way to be found mm. and then of course especially when you begin to discover some unsavory things mm. uh, about um, people that you had thought would be there so it, mm -hmm. it brings a lot of um, disappointment mm. and for me I experienced that both in the business and also I experienced that personally on mm. a personal level family level mm. because I had at some point I had family fighting me I would call it that mm. people that I would have thought okay our brother is no more will stand with his wife and mm -hmm. his children mm -hmm. to ensure that we cushion the effect of that loss. Mm -hmm. I found myself having to fight battles mm -hmm. from when my husband breathed his last. Mm -hmm. I got paramount rulers writing to me, demanding that I come home after we had settled the whole matter. Because when my husband passed 18 days later, mm -hmm. his mom passed. Oh. And then the so moment... The double whammy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the moment his mom passed, mm -hmm. people who had pretended support from the family... Mm -hmm now began to be funny mm. so i got those letters at some point i had to go to fida wow. i had um the chairman of fida at some point in aquaibum well, yeah. is a friend and i went to her yeah, said, what's fida um the federation of women lawyers international okay. federation of women lawyers okay, mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yes i just, I just, just for the listeners there, yeah. Yeah. yeah and i told her see these letters that i'm receiving mm. how do i handle this mm. And she gave me advice mm. on how to go about it. Even was as bad as they wrote a letter to my pastor wow. and said, don't officiate this funeral. Mm. We are going to plan it in the village and then get you people to come. Mm. And I had to get an so, intervention for mm. that, yeah. you know, because it's something that we had already settled. Mm. And then my mother-in-law dies and mm. the story changes. changes. I had to say, no, this far and no further. Mm. Yeah. So, so it's not it, it's uh, so it's not just disappointment, but mm. sabotage. You call it yes. can come yes. with family. But I'm, I'm happy you talked about, but but you talked about disappointment and sabotage, mm. so to say, in the context of losing a loved one through death. Mm. But remember, at the beginning, we talked about people grieve over the loss of marriage, mm. things like marriage, job, or yeah, career. Yeah. I'm sure this kind of feeling too comes when yes, you, when there's does. a loss it of say, career you know mm. and and the, especially when the career is at a top echelon yeah uh, people feel grief and mm. there's a lot of disappointment that comes so basically... how do you hedge against that because that of career mm. you can plan mm. how to deal with it because mm. at, at some point you're not going to do that job forever yeah. yeah so how can you plan to do do deal with that the loss of a career or something the, the, the consequence think, of loss of career you know because disappointment will come. i think, there are um, you think maybe it's because of what i've experienced over time mm. i tell people take things in your stride okay. when loss has happened of any form mm. and then you you find out that the people you thought will be there mm. are not there maybe you lose a very high paying job yes and you need the support from people who okay just tight help me let me mm. go through this season of mm. my life mm. until uh, you know things can pick up mm. and you discover that the people that you expect that kind of help and support from they're not coming forth mm. you know i think that at that point take things in your stride mm. 
Yes, pick up the pieces. Mm. It's temporary, no matter how tough it is. It's, it's temporary. Happen. It's not a situation that will be there forever. Mm. So get help where you can get the help and start over again. So is is the pain more more deep? Um, uh, you know, is it it's is deep. it deeper when when you have this, especially the, talking about job and career? When mm. you, you in your own estimation you've mm. dispensed a lot of favor. And you see those people you're dispensing to it's deep. disappointing you. you it's know. deep. So it can grieve from it's that. It's heart isn't it? piercing. Yes. yes. Yeah. It can cause grief. It can, yeah. Mm. So once you protect himself, how do you do that? Is it by, by not dispensing the, the, the what you, No, mean, because um it, it, the Bible says do not be weary in well doing. Okay. Regardless of that, mm. still help people. Okay. Still help people because somehow, somewhere, mm. you discover that the help will come from an unexpected source mm. it always does eventually mm-hmm. so don't be too fixated on mm. the disappointment it's that not something you, you can over plan yes, isn't it yes mm. so for things that you do not have control over just mm. let it go mm. yes and focus on the ones that you do have control control over yeah okay thank you very much um so in the course of your your work uh, you may have have there been experiences where issues around property inheritance and family squabble complicate the whole situation in the time of grief yes you know proper you know, conversations <laughs> around property inheritance that one, family that squabble. one is an everyday occurrence mm. because yes. it's as if somebody it, it, it looks as if people just wait for somebody to die okay so that okay let's go in for the kill mm. so a lot of um, women especially find themselves in, in this space. kind of mm. um, situation mm. and in that situation you need a lawyer Okay. Get a lawyer that understands about the laws that are in place, mm. you know, so that they can help you walk through that. Mm. If there's a will, mm. better. If there's no will, you can work with a lawyer and get a letter of administration mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. So, but, you know, uh, talking about will, what's your, what, what do you think about now that you've gone through that you know um. <laughs> you know a lot of people are super, so, yes. superstitious what's, about what's, that yeah, what's, what's your take about that if somebody because talking some about people wheels, think it's on african isn't it yes mm-hmm. they feel so there was a time my husband took me we have our lawyer in abuja and okay. he took me there mm. and we had a conversation with the lawyer mm. and he wanted to prepare mm. his will even though I, I i personally i was feeling morbid sort of mm-hmm. you know but it's very important that people have their wills written mm-hmm. because you don't want to die and then you leave your family to the sharks mm-hmm. even as a woman you need mm-hmm. a will mm-hmm. you need a will as well that okay. when you go this is who you want to have this or that mm-hmm. yes so it's important we shouldn't shy away from these things talking about a will doesn't mean that okay the woman is about to kill her husband mm-hmm. or you're about to kill somebody mm-hmm. to take something it's very it, it's is a protective measure mm-hmm. sort of Okay, yes. so then I have a message here who is asking, do, do, what do you think people should buy their place of final rest in advance? That one, I can't speak <laughs> to. <laughs> I can't speak to that. It's personal yes. to every individual. There mm. are some people that do that. I know of families that have family vaults. Okay. So that when somebody dies, you just go and bury them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's personal. If you want to do it, I don't think there's anything wrong with it because yeah. you cannot talk about life without talking about death. Yes, because it's you know the fact that your your living is to risk dying. Mm-hmm. All of us will die at some point. Mm-hmm. No matter how much you are in denial of it, mm-hmm. all of us will go at some point. Mm-hmm. So it's better if you you prefer to be buried in a particular way, mm-hmm. in a particular place. Mm-hmm. You prepare that for yourself if you mm-hmm. want to. Especially if you can afford it. Yeah, and if you can afford it, yes. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> this, this one I have to ask you, you know, before <laughs> I go to your song of the week and proverb of the week. Nigeria is grieving, you know. I haven't listened to you. <laughs> The last 15 minutes, Nigeria as an entity, from what I feel on the street, yeah. is really grieving. Yeah. If, if anything, in terms of our economic woes and individual and collective financial squeeze, mm. how do you suggest that the average man on the street today handle this grieving period? Because these guys are grieving. Yeah. People are hungry. People Honestly, have been disenfranchised. It's, it's, People, you know, have been mm, unleveled. You mm. know, uh, it's, 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 it's a predicament to yes. see out there. Yeah. So how do you, it, it, it's how how what what would be your advice? I think this is a pinch that touches everybody. Mm. Nobody is is immune. Or, is immune. Yeah. We are affected in one way or mm. the other. Yeah. And um it's difficult, it's difficult, but I would say let's keep hope alive okay. and um cut down mm. where you can cut down. Yeah. If so, so you are yes. dealing when you say cut down, what I hear you say is that <laughs> you have to determine the difference between need and want. Yes. Yes. It? 
you have to stay with your needs. Yes, do a scale of preference, okay, mm, and, and priority scale on uh, yeah. the priority. Is this really necessary? Can yeah. I do without it at this time? Yeah, you know, and um, just take some measures here and there mm. to survive because mm -hmm. again. It will not last forever. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we will be in this situation this, forever. This predicament for, yeah. uh, for forever, isn't it? Mm. This is the discourse with Doctor Ken. I think um, I'll love to say this one that when life puts you in a tough situation, mm. don't say why me. Okay. Say try me. Try me. Yes. So it's so like you can cope with it. Isn't yes. It? So you can fantastic. cope. <laughs> so like, that that's great. Yeah. It, it was fantastic having you today. Such a topic, thank you very much. Um, that affects us all um, yeah. at some point in our lives, and I'm, uh, I'm I'm happy to say that it's been dealt with properly today. And um, if you've enjoyed it, um, I ask you to please um, enjoy the rest of the week and ruminate and um, process what we have discussed today so what will be your song for the week Nigerian it's song international week. women's month okay um, she go say she, she go say, say i be lady, lady isn't it so <laughs> yeah. it's 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 um it was um international women's day yeah, uh, what's whole month. yesterday, and I even the whole month, women. and then today we are celebrating Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Yeah. So uh, the, the, all women out there, whether you're a girl, you're a teenager, yeah. or you're in your sixties or eighties or nineties, mm -hmm. you are a lady, isn't it? Yeah. So you are playing the lady song for them. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> you, thank you very much for Thank attending. you very much, doctor. Um, I have messages here that saying that you must come back and we must have a two point oh. <laughs> so down the line before the year rounds yeah. up, we'll schedule you for a 2.0. I'll you have a damn to... good week ahead of you there, thank listeners. You, and Doctor. thank you for hanging on to the discourse. Thank you. Thank very you very much. much and have a wonderful week. You too. Thank you. And that's it on the discourse with Dr. Ken.